Welcome to the podcast. My guest today is Josh Kaufman, author of the international bestseller, The Personal MBA, now available in its 10th anniversary edition. In this book, which I've been recommending uh, to all of my students throughout the 2010s, uh, Josh asserts that getting an MBA, regardless of the state of the economy, is too expensive a choice to fully justify. Instead, read good business books, and study the lessons he shares in the personal MBA. Josh, your book is filled um, also with terrific business-related quotes. One of my favorite uh, quotes is about compromise, and it goes, a compromise is the art of dividing a cake in such a way that everyone feels they're getting the biggest slice. What's your favorite business-related quote? Thanks, John. It's a, a pleasure to, to spend time with you today. Uh, I have two and and uh, it's kind of like asking your your favorite child i love collecting quotes and and so i, I have many that i like but there are two that that really stick with me um one on the business side creating something that's valuable to people this is uh by a lady her name is kathy sierra um she created a series of books called the head first series of books uh, which teaches people programming mm -hmm. and she has a, a saying in in a blog post a while back Upgrade your user, not your product. Value is less about the stuff and more about the stuff the stuff enables. Don't build better cameras, build better photographers. And so I, I love particularly that last line, just remembering what we're here to do, make somebody's lives better in some way. Um, and, and focusing just as much on the education of your customers as in the building of whatever it is that you have to offer. Uh, the second is uh, more on the personal side, and I, I think about this very often. Um, it's a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, finish each day and be done with it. You've done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities no doubt crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. Begin it well and serenely and with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. Oh, and those are beautiful. I, it's uh, It's a good reminder that a lot of business and life is experimentation and learning new things, trying new things. Some of those things will work and some of them will not. And, and so mm -hmm. as part of the process, that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind. And I, I can see uh, elements of those lessons throughout uh, the book that you've written. Uh, this is now the third sort of version of, of the book. Uh, before that was the paperback. Uh, because you also, you don't just talk about business lessons, you talk about those human uh, lessons, uh, uh, inter human interaction, knowing yourself, knowing others, and not just uh, different types of, of business lessons, which we'll talk a little bit about later. I, I do want to kick this off by uh, sort of confronting, uh, you know, this, this, this issue that you've, that you've stated at the beginning, you know, it's the, in the, your opening chapters of your book, um, you've said that uh, MBA programs have become uh, so expensive that you must effectively mortgage your life to pay for the price of admission. I'm mm -hmm. curious if you still hold this position in, in the COVID era when we have professionals now out of work and they're considering making this sort of big investment in, in their education and, and now might be the right time, uh, or uh, are you still holding this position in terms of uh, the not so great trade-off at all uh, in terms of what you get and what you're paying for? Yeah, I, I think the, I still hold the same position and the, the evidence or the reasons why that I hold that position have only strengthened over mm -hmm. the past decade plus. And so um, I think that the way to think about it is that business schools are optimized to be valuable to a very small segment and percentage of people. Um, they're optimized to do a very narrow task. But when you look at the, the universe of people who would benefit from learning more about business, that population is huge. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everyone, no matter who they are, what they do, what industry or market they exist in, if they're public or private sector, um, or even in academia, everyone can benefit from having a working knowledge of what businesses are, how they work, and how to make them better. And so I think the thing that business schools, the primary drawback of business schools for most people 
it's not the business education part. You can get the business education part, learning about business by yourself. Mm -hmm. What business schools do or the primary drawback is they're extraordinarily expensive. And so on a personal level, when you sign up for an MBA program, um, you're often borrowing tens, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. What you're buying is not necessarily education. Education can be, can be gotten from books and resources and, and far less expensive means. Um, in essence, you're buying a credential. Mm -hmm. And that credential is only valuable in a very small set of circumstances. And the process of borrowing money and spending multiple years of your life oftentimes to get that credential is it's very costly in both time, money, and flexibility. And so by borrowing money, you are reducing your options. Mm -hmm. You are, are locking yourself into a path that may or may not work for you. And so to me, the thing that makes the most sense is, yes, get the best business education, learn about business, understand it, know how to do it well and how to make an existing business better. And the good news is you don't have to borrow tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. Well, I often think about uh, another quote, or it's more of a joke. It's uh, what, what do you call the person who graduated from the bottom of their class in medical school? Doctor. doctor yeah right and uh you're, you're buying a piece of paper uh having that piece of paper uh isn't uh, an indication of your experience and your ability uh to that end i'm curious i think you'd be a great person to ask this question to do you think that this this whole idea of business leadership you know leadership uh training in in, an, in the online sense in the book sense uh, even compares that all to, to, to leadership experience in the real world. In other words, can, can leadership actually be taught? I think that leadership is learned primarily through experience in right. real world circumstances. Um, it's, I've, I've read a lot of leadership books. I have taken leadership courses. I've, I, I have a pretty good working understanding of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And what you learn in that pales in comparison to what you learn two or three days into leading an actual team doing actual things. Yeah, I agree. And uh, related to that as well, I'm going to hammer, hammer away at, at uh, this, this critique you've given, because I think it really sets up the need for the book. Uh, you've also said that many MBA programs teach, and I'm quoting you now, Josh, <laughs> many worthless, outdated, and even outright damaging concepts and practices. Uh, I'm... If, can you speak more to that? And can you also talk about any pushback you might have received over the, the past decade on, on, on that kind of statement? Uh, yeah. You're, you're so, criticizing a, a multi-million dollar, uh, multi-multi-million dollar industry, uh, call it an industry, right? The business, the educational industry uh, globally. So I'm really curious about, uh, you know, who said what to you? You don't have to sure. say who, but <laughs> no, it's 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 really interesting, and, and I, I have to say um, these are not. This is not a position that I've made up out of whole cloth. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I try to be very diligent about is um, is doing research and and finding sources and 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 having having some um, some research behind what I'm saying. So you don't necessarily have to just take my word for it. Um, two of the the very influential pieces of literature on my thinking in this area. Um, one is titled, and direct quote, The End of Business Schools, Less Success Than Meets the Eye. It's by uh, <laughs> Dr. Jeffrey Pfeffer uh, of Stanford University and Dr. Christina Fong of the University of Washington. And yeah. they looked into the, all of the, the data and research literature about do MBA programs make students more successful? Do they rise higher in organizations? Do they make more money? Do they have a better time starting a business? All of these things. And uh, the upshot is uh, no, no, they, they don't. There's absolutely no evidence that uh, contributes to this idea that MBA students are more successful. Um, there's a more recent study that looked, uh, looked at the, um, the effect of having an MBA degree on both the success of CEOs, so mm -hmm. are, are CEOs success more with MBAs more successful than CEOs who don't uh, MBA degrees, 
and do their companies perform better? So this is a, a, a paper um, that was published in Institutional Investor. It's called The MBA Myth and the Cult of the CEO. Uh, okay. You can see where this is going. Yeah. Uh, so the two co-authors, Dan Rasmussen and Haonan Lee, looked at, uh, I think it was off the top of my head, 8,500 CEOs and uh, slice and diced the data in every way they knew how. Mm -hmm. And the upshot is uh, CEOs who have MBAs are not successful, uh, more successful than, uh, than CEOs who don't. And companies who are led by MBA trained executives are not more successful than uh, companies that are led by executives who don't. And so I think it's this, this really interesting dynamic. There's, there is a story that is often told about this particular credential. And the fact is the, the data just doesn't back up the truth and veracity of that story. And so for me, um, yes, I have received some pushback. Yeah. Um, that pushback is primarily from graduates of okay. very expensive and very prestigious business schools. And I think it, it often comes down to making people uncomfortable in terms of status. And so mm -hmm. If you're a person who has, okay, so right now in the United States, when you look at the total cost of, of a, the highest level um, business school degrees, mm -hmm. um, so top, top 10, 15, there are nine business schools when you total up all the costs, tuition, fees, cost of living, opportunity cost of lost wages, um, all of those things, put it together over a two year full-time program, the total is over $400,000. Oh my God. Which is just, it's insane. And um, so usually the pushback that I get or the, the people who don't take very well to the thesis of this is not necessary, there are other ways to, to solve this particular problem, are usually uh, either students or graduates of the top schools who are paying an enormous amount of money for something that at least you know the the current data and research says is probably not going to help them very much in the long run and i think you know anyone who looks at the linkedin profiles of others within uh, their organization and those uh, who have climbed the ladder or in higher positions and you, if you start combing through, you start noticing, you're seeing, you know, oh, this person had a history degree or, or a three-year diploma or, yep. you know, uh, uh, medieval studies or sociology or psychology. And, and, and I think that's a great exercise for, for, for new and recent graduates to start looking at the, that past um, educational history. Uh, but also what maybe people have been doing while they're working. So this is another question. Do you, ha do you have an opinion on doing an MBA uh, part-time while, while you're working? And, and I've heard that there are programs, for example, in which companies will help uh, cover some of the costs of doing that, uh, that MBA while people are, are working. And obviously, you need, you'll, you'll work a little less while you're completing your studies. Yeah, I, I think um, this is an answer that has multiple facets. Mm -hmm. And so with any sort of, of credential, uh, I think it's valid to say if somebody else is covering the cost of, of that um, in a substantial way, it changes the equation. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think at that point for your personal decision making, it comes down to the opportunity cost of your time and energy and capacity. I had, uh, so back when I was a, a recent, uh, recent graduate working in my first full-time corporate job, I asked the same question to, to uh, the director that I was reporting to at the time, a guy by the name of Andy Walter. Mm -hmm. uh, this was, I was working at a, a Fortune 500, Procter & Gamble. And Andy ultimately became the director of many of P&G's largest IT projects. So this is, this is a guy who is doing the thing very well, Right. doesn't have an MBA. Um, his background was electrical engineering. And what he told me is that if you would take the same amount of time and energy that you would put into completing an MBA program and you focus that into your work and learning as much as you can and then keeping yourself 
healthy and well on the personal side, mm -hmm. you'll do just as well, if not better, than the folks who go the credentialing path. And I, I think this is this is a, a colloquialism. There's there's not very much research supporting this that I'm aware of. But um, if you are in a relationship or if you are married, uh, part-time MBAs have sometimes a severe cost on the personal side of the equation, your relationships with your family, your spouse, your friends. Right. Um, oftentimes, part-time MBAs are called the divorce course. And I think that's really <laughs> unfortunate because that's a cost that you can't quantify in dollars. But the long-term life ramifications of, of taking essentially all of your personal time and putting it into something um, that's essentially a piece of paper, but then paying that severe cost in, in, on the personal front, I have a hard time understanding how that would be worth it. The divorce course. I hadn't heard that before. And it's, <laughs> it, just, it, it makes me sad. Like It yeah. doesn't have to be that way. And something else you point out, uh, I think, uh, through through citing other authors who've done that that research, you know, you're looking at at least a decade if you start right away, yeah. uh, in order to to pay that pay back uh, that that investment. And ultimately, uh, studies show overall that um, you know uh, there's there's really it doesn't have an impact on your um, lifetime earnings if you compare it to other groups, um, yeah. other groups of workers in business. Um, Josh, you in your in your earlier books, you the earlier version of your book, you talked about lessons on, and I, and I love this because to your point, it's a great book for anyone who is not in business and wants to, frankly, understand how the world works. Let's not kid ourselves that uh, politics and business are are, are really um, what the the world revolves around. And uh, whether you're a sociology or psychology uh, graduate, I mean, don't go into the world without learning how the world works. And that's uh, from a business uh, point of view. And you talk about things like value creation, marketing, sales, finance. You talk about understanding, improving systems, understanding the human mind and our own self, as I mentioned earlier. So since then, uh, with this new uh, 10th anniversary edition, I'm really curious what other topics have emerged. And, and while you're at it, maybe you could tie a few to the, their, their resonance uh, in the COVID age uh, that, we're, that we're going through today. Yeah, okay. So um, there's, there's, there's a lot. And, and the, over the three editions of the book, um, I've had a couple of opportunities to go back. My goal for the personal MBA is to make it the ideal business 101 for everyone who is interested in learning about this topic, regardless of what industry or market or their personal background or how much experience um, someone has in business. The goal is take an alien who comes to earth and they're trying to learn about business, they know absolutely <laughs> nothing. Let's, let's encapsulate the core of what it is that we're doing here. Yeah. And so, the, the overall structure of the book hasn't changed. So part one is all about business and we cover the five parts of every business. Um, as you said, value creation, marketing, sales, value delivery, and finance. All of the things that are absolutely necessary in order for a business to exist as a functioning system. Mm -hmm. uh, part two of the book is all about people because businesses are created by people for the benefit of other people. If you don't understand psychology and communication and negotiation and working with others in a constructive way, working with your, your own mind in a constructive way, you're going to have a really hard time when it comes to the practice of business. And so part two of the book is all about the, the cognitive and behavioral psychology that appears most often in business practice, why it's important and how you use it. Great. And then the third part of the book is all about systems. And so businesses are complex systems that exist within even more complex systems called societies and mm -hmm. governments. And so understanding how systems work um, helps you figure out, hey, when you're looking at a business or some other type of complex system, it gives you a way to break it down and understand what's going on. So you'll be able to look at the different pieces of that system 
and make improvements to improve the functioning of that system over time. And so I think all three of those things are, are really important. Understanding the core of, of what a business is, understanding how people work, and understanding how systems work gives you a very firm functional understanding of, of how to look at a business and how to make it better. Terrific, Josh. I'm going to end by encouraging everyone to go to personalmba.com uh, where they can learn more about uh, Josh's book and, and how to get it. Uh, we'll also put uh, some links in the show notes. I know it's also available on audio. And uh, for what it's worth, everyone, I mean, this book has sold over 900,000 copies. It's been the number one uh, bestseller in business on Amazon, in training on Amazon, and uh, as, a, as an audio book as well. So I can't thank you enough for making time, uh, Josh. Uh, for, I know you're a very busy man. Uh, I'm not sure how your ukulele uh, playing has has uh, has uh, has progressed since your TEDx talk. We're going to put a link to that in the show notes too. Uh, how is that going before we before I go? Uh, so far, so good. I actually have uh, mine right here. It's amazing. It's always always within arm's reach. So everything that I talk about for skill acquisition. Um, in the in my second book, the first twenty hours, I I'm still at it. <laughs> Terrific, Josh Kaufman. Thank you very much uh, to everyone listening. Have a productive week, and make sure you get your hands on the personal MBA. You'll be glad you did. You're very kind, John. Thank you for, so much for having me on. Yeah.